In the press, inflation is regularly classified as public enemy number one, and we're urged, pressured even, to take necessary drastic action to curb inflation. But what are these costs of inflation? And is it bad for everyone? Who pays for it? And how do we pay for it? Let's find out. To improve our understanding of this cost of inflation and who ends up paying for it, we need to investigate three important side effects of inflation. That's the distribution effects, the economic effects, and the social and political effects of inflation. If inflation is not correctly anticipated, it can actually redistribute wealth from one group of people to another. Now, a union federation like Kasatu will negotiate wages for its members for quite a period of time into the future, maybe the next three years. If the rate of inflation turns out to be higher than the rate the union base their negotiations on, the workers will suffer, because their wages, their buying power, doesn't go as far as they planned. Is this loss of buying power lost to the whole economy, though? Well, the answer's no. What the worker loses in buying power is gained by the firms that employ them, because they're charging inflation-driven prices for their goods, but paying wages calculated on less than real inflation. In this scenario, inflation doesn't destroy purchasing power, but it does redistribute it. Elderly people who rely on their savings, pensions for their livelihood, are particularly vulnerable to this redistribution effect. Most pension plans are devised around projected inflation rates. And if those projections are wrong, and that country experiences a significantly higher inflation rate, those pensioners will have lost out. Inflation also tends to redistribute wealth from lenders to borrowers. For example, if I borrow a thousand rand from you today, in order to buy pots and pans and promise to pay it back to you in a year's time, I'll be able to buy, say, six pots and four pans. But when I repay you the money, the price of pots and pans will have gone up and you may only be able to buy five pots and three pans. Now, this redistribution effect has important economic consequences. Let's look at savings, for instance. As with the pension plans, why would people bother to save if inflation is going seriously to erode the purchasing power of those savings? If inflation's high, it actually makes no sense to save. What about investment? If inflation is high, investors tend to move away from productive investment, building, factories and so on. And they go to speculative assets like shares, property and foreign currency in anticipation that the value of these assets will keep pace with or overtake inflation. This process of speculation is a bit like gambling, and it will often accelerate inflation, pushing it to even higher levels. If the inflation rate in South Africa is higher than that of our trading partners, it can negatively affect our balance of payments. Our exports become expensive compared to other nations, we become less competitive internationally and start to lose business. High inflation also impacts on the functioning of our price mechanisms. What's the point to scream? Wait, we're going to spend ages arguing about something we've missed. All we're going to try doing is try now. Changes in relative prices over time are an important source of information to both consumers and producers. With high inflation, these price signals become more difficult to interpret. There's more anxiety in their system, more noise, more static it becomes difficult to pick up a clear, predictable price pattern. Economists believe that high inflation rates negatively affect economic growth rates, and in the end, it's the poor that suffer the most. And it doesn't stop there. High inflation can also bring about social and political unrest. If the price of basic commodities like food and petrol become too expensive, people have to direct their frustration somewhere. Where else? But the government the outcome can be very destructive. Now, curiously, high inflation can even breed further inflation. This is the so-called inflation spiral, and it's caused by people's expectations about inflation. If people expect inflation to continue, for prices to keep rising, 
they start acting in a way that further fuels inflation. Now, if this spiral continues, an economy can find itself in a devastating cycle of hyperinflation.